And now we have our last for the digital commerce uh, participant here on the stage, representing another, actually one of the largest in the world groups, but it's local subsidiary here in Turkey, Ilker from Nasper's group. Ilker, please join us here on the stage. How are you? Welcome, very Thank well. You very much. Here is your clicker. This is another innovation that needs to be done. You know, this clicker is, you always lose them. So yeah, yeah. this you start with the green button. Okay, so thank you very much. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for taking your time. So I would be uh, briefly providing you some information about how Nashville's globally and us as Marco Foni see the commerce is kind of evolving. I am sure uh, you have been already given very similar insights. Uh, it's been a long day with many speakers. So uh, basically when, when we look at globally, we see that the commerce we are used to is being disrupted every single day because there has been an ongoing change on global consumer needs. Uh, they are changing every day. Uh, and what we see that uh, the enabling technologies combined with the changing consumer needs is kind of redefining the way the commerce takes place in the world. So this is a simple equation that we as Naspers and Marcofoni is uh, focusing our efforts. So uh, for those who may not heard about who we are shortly, is Naspers. Is Naspers is a hundred years old company, both uh, as an investor and operating uh, consumer platforms uh, operating over 100 plus countries uh, and basically we can say that we are operating in almost all uh, business segments in e-commerce and in media so uh, the the largest businesses we are running would be if we can list this Tencent is leading uh, basically uh, Flipkart is one of the leading uh, e-commerce platforms in India and also when it comes to classified businesses we have OLX and Allegro is kind of dominating the East European market uh, and Nespers presence in Turkey is now basically uh, the game is played on Marcofoni uh, as a fashion uh, e-commerce player uh, we have a payment uh, player PayU in Turkey and you, I am sure you will be hearing more about it is uh, there is a new entrant in Turkish market that Nespers recently uh, invested, which is called Letgo. Uh, basically, they are uh, number one in in their segment uh, in the last couple of weeks in Apple Store. So it's basically a mobile only uh, C2C uh, marketplace for second-hand goods. So when we look at as kind of businesses uh, in uh, Nespers, when I talk about B2C businesses, we see that B2C businesses are growing uh, around 35 to 40% across the globe, uh, which, is, which shows us that it is from the, uh, let's say, end-to-end uh, -end consumer experience is very hard to deliver because it's, uh, we see it's much more difficult to run e-tail businesses, B2C businesses, but it is a kind of, uh, in a growing stage also globally. Uh, these numbers are also very representative about Marcofoni growth in Turkish market. So uh, when it comes to Nespers' view on Turkish market, Nespers is very enthusiastic uh, in Turkish market. Uh, one of the reasons as for everyone sees that there is an uh, ongoing year-over-year -year growth, uh, which is dominated by mobile growth, basically, especially in the last two years. But the second piece of it is that uh, the, the macroeconomic numbers, when we look at Turkish population, very adaptive new generation, uh, the penetration of online is still sits between 1.5 to 2%. So we know that there is going to be a two times, three times growth potential. So this is basically uh, one of the major uh, reasons of why Nespers is kind of dedicating its resources into Turkish market. So, in other words, 
I mean, very similar slide. That is the real question we are, not as Marcafoni, but I think as the all ecosystem in Turkey should kind of find an answer. Why uh, in Turkey we are still just representing 1.6% of total retail, retail spending. So we basically see there are more on our side, on our plates, not only Marcafoni as an e-commerce player, but also logistic providers, payment providers, you know, anything around online, I think we are still not there yet to convince customers shifting behavior from offline to online. So Turkey has a, a very heavily penetrated offline uh, retail, and I think uh, it is way beyond many markets. So we see that that is one of the challenges that online is facing. We are having more difficulties in terms of bringing convenience through online because uh, access to offline stores are not that difficult compared to some markets. They are open seven days, 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the evening. So that is kind of bringing a little bit difficulty. But moving forward, we see that year over year growth uh, and speed to delivery and also some uh, mobile payment facilities will kind of bring some exponential growth soon. So it is kind of a snowball impact. We have been working on it for several years, but we see that it's not going to be that difficult where we take 1% to 1.5. I think we will have less time to reach 4.5% to 5% in coming three years. So, uh, very similar equation. So the numbers and the sh share of online today doesn't match to each other. We are talking about 40 plus million connected people. We are ranking in social media numbers in the top three globally. However, this never been enabled in e-commerce spending yet. But this is the upside of uh, Turkish market. Uh, we believe that only 10 million out of 44 million, that is the key. I mean, we need to jump up to 20 million plus online users that will bring us also to 4.5, 5% of online share in Turkish market. Uh, talking about the customer numbers, demographics, we can also translate these numbers is how big is e-commerce market in Turkey. I mean, this is, these are recent to visat numbers. Uh, when we look at whole e-commerce space, we are talking about around 19 billion Turkish lira. But when we narrow it down to B2C businesses like us or multi-category retailers and the others, marketplaces, it, we see that it's just basically 6.5 billion. So this is quite low numbers compared to the total market numbers in Turkey. Uh, looking at the uh, uh, different business segment growths, we see that especially in the place where we are present as Marcofoni, uh, we have seen over time that local and global players, some of them are stepped out. The numbers, the growth numbers you see in marketplaces is very similar to global trends. But we see that the new investments or the new startups, we see more and more uh, new companies are have a more tendency to build aggregating kind of platforms, marketplace kind of businesses, rather than uh, building e-tail businesses, which is really uh, very capital intensive, very label intensive, so, and don't uh, kind of allow uh, fragmented marketplace. So we see that the growth in vertical is less because the number of players are getting less. The growth is very high in marketplaces because most of the new investments, most of the startups we see uh, is kind of preferring marketplace kind of business segments. So when we look at where Naspers and of course as a subsidiary of Naspers, we focus our uh, resources is basically mobile. So we see that uh, in the coming years, in five years time, it's like a billion new users are going to come from mobile. And geographically, when we see it's basically coming from emerging markets. 
So uh, when we look at Nespers' presence all around the globe, you will see that Nespers is exactly present and expanding in emerging markets. So where this mobile shift is taking place. So we, of course, Turkey is part of the uh, MENE area. So this is why uh, Nespers' radar is also present in Turkish market. So what came out from this mobile shift for Marcofoni business in Turkey, we basically seen a dramatic shift from our desktop mobile uh, share of businesses. So in a year time, we see that uh, half of our business is now already mobile. So uh, more or less, uh, to our knowledge, is the Turkish industry overall now in the e-commerce area, we are talking about mobile transaction share is around 22%. So we are, as Marcofoni, we are kind of uh, at the top of uh, mobile share with uh, around 50%. Uh, if so uh, the numbers in terms of traffic shift and also transaction shift is very similar. We see that our traffic, now 59%, is coming from mobile channels versus desktop channels. When it comes to transaction, so this is much more a case for us because we have suffered a lot when there was a huge and speedy shift from desktop to mobile. Uh, the conversion rate difference between desktop and mobile was dramatically different. So we were not able to keep up the loss on desktop traffic because the conversion rates were very high. But now we, during the last year, we have seen that our mobile conversion rates are close to our desktop mobile desktop conversion rate, so we keep up growing also at times of uh, top line revenue. So uh, basically, I mean, uh, within the 10 minutes you uh, uh, give to me, uh, I would tr I try to give you some flavor about how, who Nespers is, why we are in Turkey as Nespers in which businesses, and how Marcofoni sees uh, the e-commerce space to be changing. So we are focusing our efforts 90% on mobile piece of the business. And the rest things we, I can only uh, give uh, is the last words. What are we doing from our side to improve uh, the online, offline shift for consumers? It sits in three places. One is mobile. Second one is improved logistic capabilities in terms of delivery speed. Uh, and the third one is sitting around speed of payment and payment options. So thank you very much uh, for taking your time to listen. Hope I finished, you know, it's an acceptable delay. I'm two minutes late. So thank you very much again.